All right, check it out. I've got this super simple platformer level with three different lighting scenarios on it, which is honestly just created by changing the tile map blocks here on a tile map layer, and then just one sprite image that I put three different color strips on. And if you look at this, when we move our player around and the player moves from zone to zone, he changes color. The player changes colors to kind of represent what zone the player is in, which can be kind of fun if the player is walking through a lighted area or a shadowed area to change the color of that player. So let's take a look at how I set that up really quickly, not before I go over here and show you that it resets to not have any color effect on it. And let's take a look at how to set that up. First thing, it's gonna be really helpful for me to turn on show polygon collisions so you can see what's happening. And let's take a look at what we have really quickly here. We have just a background, which again is just a sprite that I divided into three different colored areas. We have the tile map, which is just a tile map with the solid behavior on it. And then we have the player, which has nothing fancy on it except for movement controls, and then just one other event and action on it that sets the color. We'll look at that in just a second. And then we have the triggers, which are the most exciting thing in here. And we'll talk about them in just a second. So first let's take a look at how to change the color of any sprite during runtime or while the game is being played. So let's go over to the event sheet and I'll go ahead and just say add new event. And just for example, I'll do an start layout event just to get something in there. So when the game starts and then we'll select the player and any sprite under the appearance section will have this set color option or you can just type in set C to the uh, search field here and choose set color. Now when you do set color, the dialog comes up there, you'll see a function already in there for you. And this function, RGBEX, takes three parameters. The first parameter is the num numeric value for red, the second one is the numeric value for green, and the third one is the numeric value for blue. Now normally, really quickly, and this is boring right here, but normally with RGB, we think of values between zero and the number 255. Zero represents dark or black, and 255 represents white or approaching white. So if you wanted something that was all white, you would type in 255, 255, 255, and if you wanted something that was all black, you would type in 000. zero, zero. But in Construct, we don't go between 0 and 255. We go as sort of a percentage amount between 0 and 100. So 0, 0, 0 still represents all black, black for each channel, and 100 represents 100%-ish, you could think of it, which would represent white for each channel. So all you'd have to do to change the color is just type in the values for red, green, and blue between zero and 100 that you would want. And again, zero would be a darker version, the darkest part of the, the red. And I'm not explaining this exactly accurately, but you get it. And 100 would be more towards the lighter version of that color or not a lot of influence of that color. So if you want to know how to get these RGB values, you can get them in any paint editing program like Photoshop or anything like that. Or you can just go to the web and search for RGB color picker and Google will probably pop this up for you and you can get them right from there. So you can see we have 229, 235, and 52 for our yellow color. That's red, green, and blue. But how do we get that into that, that, that percentage between zero and 100? Where you can kind of guess that this is on the higher level. It's close to 100. So this is probably 80 or 90. This is probably 80 or 90. And this is probably less than that, uh, maybe one third of the way. So you can guess like that. Is maybe 25, 30, 40 percent, something like that. Or you can search for RGB to RGB percentage converters and use one of those. Here's one on CodePen that's really good. And you can just type those values in here and it will tell you exactly how much or what numbers to enter into construct. So that's how you would change the player's color using the set color action there and how you would get the correct red, green, and blue values in there. But we want that to happen all automatically and we want it to happen while the game is being played. So instead of the start page, let's take a look uh, back here at our triggers. So you can see I have four triggers out here. And when the player runs into one of these triggers, the trigger will cause an action to fire and that action will feed in some data into the set color parameter that we looked at earlier and change the player's color. Let's go through it kind of step by step of what happens here. First of all, it's important to note that these triggers are just one object. You can look over here in the project and see that they're called the trigger player color and it's just a sprite. It's literally just a sprite with no graphics that's on the stage and then I just change the dimensions to take up the whole height of the screen in case the player is jumping or something like that. So it's really just one object. You could create four or five, a hundred different objects that and then check for the name of that object and then change the color based on the name of that object but that would be a lot of work and it would be really messy it's better to just use one object duplicate it a bunch of times when we duplicate it we're creating instances of it and then give that object instance variables so that we can tell each trigger or each instance of the one trigger that we have what values we'd like to send into the player's set color parameter 
So to do that, you just select any one of the triggers on your stage, choose instance variables, and you can see I have three added here. I have one called R, one called G, and one called B. They all take a number. So then for each instance of this trigger object, I can type in different values. So first of all, the reset one, I wanna just set this one to 100, 100, 100 to get rid of the effect. If I set it to 0, 0, 0, it would turn the player all black, which I can show you just really quickly. You can see now he's all black and it doesn't reset. So the one you want to reset or turn the color effect off, set that one to 100, 100, 100, and that will cause construct to reset the color. So now it goes back like that. And then you're just trying to figure out like what color do I want this area of lighting to be? And so we picked a yellow one, we went over to RGB, we found the 250, zero to 255 value, converted that into a percent. I know it seems like a lot of steps, right? Like it's not, you can guess to some degree, uh, but if you wanna be more accurate and mess around with it, you can use that. And then we just put those in as the instance variable. So I put in what values to me between zero and 100 represent the red, green, and the blue value. Again, this is for when the player is moving left to right into this zone. And then this other one over here is for when the player is moving right to left into this zone, but they're the same values. The blue one there we just set up is 20, 20, 100. So say you have all your triggers set up with the right red, green, and blue value set in them. How do you actually get those into the color? Well, let's go to event sheet. So we wanna create an event, and I think of this part as like when or if. So when the trigger player color, which is that trigger object, when that's hit by the player, so we're not checking if the player hits it. You can do this in reverse. You can do when the player hits the trigger player color or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. But for me, I put when the trigger player color, that trigger object is hit by the player, we wanna do an action on the player. And the action we wanna do is set color, which we looked at before. But this time, instead of us typing in the zero to 100 value in the red, green, and blue, we wanna grab the variables of the trigger object instance that the player hint. And Construct is smart enough to know that the instance variables you wanna grab are for the most recent trigger player object that the player contacted with. So the one that caused this function or this event to fire is the instant value it's gonna pull automatically for you. You don't need to worry about that. So when there's a collision between the trigger player color object and the player, we grab the player and we set its color and I'll just show you how one of them works and then you can just apply it to the rest. So to get your variable in there, you type the name of the object that has the instance variables. In my case, that's trigger player color, but in your, you could have named your trigger object something else. It'll probably pop up here. And then we put a period on the end to bring up the picker for its variables. I know mine is R, but if you named your something different, type in the first letter, it'll come up and then you choose R. Do the same thing, I would type it in again for G and for B. And so then I have the red, green, and blue instance variables being passed into this function for the trigger player trigger object that was most recently hit. Boy, that was a mouthful. So there you go. And if you liked this video, found anything useful in it, do me a favor and throw a thumbs up on it if you would. That means like it, like the video. That would be helpful, I guess. And if you like this channel and you want to learn more about Construct 3 and developing games quickly for things like game jams and your own projects, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to keep moving this guy back and forth until the video is over, which is right now.